Tonight I was working with VMware Converter and just realized I should record a video of this. Uh, it doesn't look like I've covered that topic for years. So notice what I did. I simply typed VMware Converter download in Google and clicked on the first result. Now I did log in, so if you're challenged for username and password, you will need to provide one or sign up for a My VMware account. That's all free. Okay, so now we're on the download page. And this is the latest, 6.1.1. Even though vSphere 6.5 came out 6.5 came out yesterday, November 15, 2016, uh, this converter still seems to work. So I'm gonna manually download this. All right, so that's how you get yourself a converter. Now, 174 megabytes. Go ahead and launch that and show you the rather straightforward install. Now this is a Windows 10 machine. It's actually underperforming for some tests I was doing. So whether it's a physical or virtual machine or Hyper-V, it doesn't matter. If you have a booted copy of Windows, this is an easy way I'm about to show you of moving this running Windows copy somewhere else, like in this case to my ESXi uh, it's actually a 6.0 machine is what I'm going to be moving it to. So I'm basically testing out Converter's ability to clone from Windows 10, basically clone, clamping its hard drive and all the contents in it. A complete working copy of it will come up over on ESXi 6.0 infrastructure. Actually, I have another machine up with 6.5, so I'd rather test that to make this video a little more modern, kind of letting you know, does this 6.1 converter work with vSphere 6.5? Why not try that? Okay, welcome. All right, in this case, we're just doing local install. And now it's installing. So it's going to ask us some questions, you know, typical wizard. They're not difficult questions. Uh, there might be a little bit of cleanup. It depends. Like if you're taking a laptop that has a whole lot of, I don't know, HP, Dell, Lenovo utilities on it, well, it's going to be a little weird for all that to run in a VM over on the other side. But that's okay. You just uninstall that junk. Uh, it's gotten a lot easier these days. IDE is long behind us. HCI tends to be on on most biases and systems. So when you move around, Windows tends to boot, even if the hardware is vastly different, which it is in a VM. It's all kind of VMware branded hardware rather than your, you know, native machine that you're cloning from. So notice a VMware converter icon show on the desktop, whether we wanted it or not. And it looks like, uh, this machine is SSD backed, but it's on the slower, older side. So that's why I'm moving from here to a much faster machine. All right, click finish. I want to run it now. And here comes the user interface. Convert machine. This local machine makes it way easier. I'm going to click on view source details to get a sense of uh, what I found out. So there you go. File system, it figured out everything it needs to know to hit next. All right, notice the options. I'm not moving it to a VMware Workstation, I'm moving it to VMware Infrastructure, so it's ESXi in this case. So now let me take a quick look at what the name of my ESXi host is. This is my ESXi 6.5 host I told you I was going to use. Now you can also go by IP, that could be more reliable if you have flaky DNS. And you don't go, if you have a VCSA or vCenter managing an ESXi host, uh, it's best to just clone straight to the ESXi host, most robust. All right, not much going on there. 
All right, it found an SSD or a VMFS data store, excuse me, that is an SSD to clone to. There's actually only one, so not a whole lot of questions here because there's only one place it possibly could put it on the destination. All right, now we've got a Red X. So let's have a look at that. And I have a feeling I know what it is. Uh, this is too small. Let's make that bigger. There we go. I'm going to go to Advanced. And on the destination, we did not want that thick. The red X should go away. Now that's going to be thin provision. So there's no way 750 gig is going to fit on a 500 gig SSD. But if we thin provision it, sure, no trouble. We're going to leave the size alone, all that stuff, but I had to thin provision it. So that was the trickiest spot in this whole video. And that is if you have a thin provision source drive that uses trickery to pretend it's a 750 gig, and you want to clone it to a 500 gig or less VMFS. Well, I only have about 30 gig of actual data to clone, so thin provisioning will get me uh, over there with no problem at all. All right, anything else I want to change? Four vCPUs, eight gig of RAM, VM network. It basically made a whole bunch of decisions for me. Generally, you don't need to touch these. I'm trying to keep this video simple, so I'm just going to click finish. All right, another tip is this screen is not terribly informational. It does tell you how long though. We can double click to get these column widths auto resized. And we can click once on the line to bring up stuff down at the bottom. On the summary tab, it actually shows you a bunch of stuff too. And it can resize like this because we have only one job going. All right, so now we have a, a nice UI to give us an overview of progress as it goes. If I have a look here, under performance, under ethernet, excuse me, on uh, task manager, I can see we're not pushing much data yet. So it looks like it's still um, configuring the destination uh, VMFS data store to hold this new VM. We're trying to push over to it. That takes some time, even when it's then provisioned but once that's kicked off, we'll start seeing data flying over the wire, meaning C drive being cloned to C drive, essentially. So that's really what Converter uh, does. It also does some other magic under the covers to try to help ensure it's going to boot over in the target as it's uh, created a VM version of its physical former self. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of how it runs. And now you see 121 meg, so the data flow has obviously begun. Okay, and uh, if we look at the disk, it's gotten a little bit busy too. Um, all right, so that's this look at VMware Converter Kickoff. What you're really going to want to see is what happens when the converter is done. So I'm going to fast forward in time until we get to that spot. And then I'll resume showing you around. Hang tight for a second. Here we go. Okay, we're back. And it's now showing just three minutes left, at which point it will be done. Why that last three minutes uh, takes so long? Well, I think it's, let's see. Yeah, the data move Looks like it might almost be done. What it's probably doing is configuring. So how about we have a quick look? So over here, uh, okay, that's a little confusing, but basically you're looking at my ESXi host that happened to have a, a VM running. Uh, not much to do with the current migration. That's the second VM we just added. So here's the host, the server that we're moving this workload, this uh, Windows 10 system from uh, into. Wow, that was poorly worded. Anyhow, this 12 core system can easily handle such a tiny VM, as you can see from these numbers in the upper right. If we click on more VMs, you'll see a list of all the VMs currently running. And there's the Win 10 client we were just moving. It is not powered on. If we click it and look at its hard disk, there it is. It's a VMDK. If we tap on that, 
we can see what's going on. So that's the data store. Those are the files. Twenty six point five seven gigs of data were moved over. All right, let's see what the converter is saying now. It finished off camera there, but uh, it did finish. Took a little while, but that's a fair amount of data to move from a sluggish old machine. So cloning's done. I can really just close that UI. I can actually uh, go to the jobs view. And copy is new if I want to repeat that job someday. Just a little tip there on converter. So I showed you all the basics of converter. Now it's time to test out this VM. So is there anything I want to do before booting it? Nah, I don't want to scare you. VMware Tools is not on it, so I'll need to take care of that once it's up. But at least now I'll know I didn't want the converter to try to inject tools in there because it might not get the newest version. I want the tools that 6.5 gives it, which I think are called 10.1 now, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, I should probably show you what it looks like. So clicking on the UI, there we go. Ah, you missed the early boot. It booted so fast, but that's a good sign. This obviously, uh, this conversion went well. And you can see since I converted myself, my own machine, everything made it over, including VMware converted itself. Now, that wasn't so smart that I booted it at the same time as the old one. So that's a bit of an oops. So it's going to have a hard time. Uh, well, it's going to, that made it unnecessarily uh, trickier. So I got an idea. How about I finish up with installing tools? So actions. This thing's warning me. Hey, 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 pay attention to me, All right? Okay, once tools is installed, I'll shut it down. So everything looks like I made it over. It looks like I used the wrong uh, VM NIC type. I would have preferred to use a different one, but I'll show you that in a minute when tools comes up. All right, did tools come up? Hmm. It's like, no, I ended up with two DVDs also, which is a little weird. All right. What did I do wrong with this? Actions. Cast OS. Install tools is grayed out. All right, so now we've got the tools folder. Go to releases. And there's 10.1, the very latest for Windows. Go to x64, because it's the 64-bit version I want. And that's the tools I want. All right, so I made this VMware converter video a little more complicated, because 6.5 was in the mix. And for whatever zany reason, uh, tools didn't want to install seamlessly. Let's see if I can get it going here. Nope, VMware tools just grayed out. So that's... Uh, Probably something to do with CD-ROM and so forth. So before I go installing tools that way, how about I have a quick look at the settings of this VM. Okay, we did end up with two CD-ROMs for some reason. So that's a little weird. Okay. And how about we check VMware tools, which I believe an old version might already be installed. 
All right, so tools was ready installed. I'm getting a false message here about tools not being installed. Uh, if I put 10.1 on there, I might be able to resolve that. Here's a directory for 10.1. I'm going to go ahead and open that. So now we're venturing into the part of the video that's kind of experimental. It's me putting on a later version of tools just for curiosity to see if suddenly ESXi 6.5 understands that this VM has tools installed after all. Heck, it's even possible just a simple reboot and it might have picked up on that. I don't know. But 10.1 is the way to go for tools anyway. It's now separated from ESXi releases. You don't need to wait around for the next release to get tools. You can grab it at any time, as you saw me just show you from that, from this folder. And we'll get to see all the versions there and all the OSs there. All right, tools should be installed shortly here. It's going to blink. You often lose video in the middle of it. I may have uh, missed that. And as always, it's going to ask me to reboot after it's installed. So now we get to see, does this nag screen go away? About tools. Now auto refresh got turned off at some point. Not sure when. Turned it back on, but the nag screen went away at this part. Once Windows comes up, we'll see if the tools menu or warning is gone. Okay, that's cool. Looks like we're done with this conversion project. Um, so yeah, if you have duplicate IPs or anything else to do, this would be your time to clean it up. But I've now shown you a successful conversion of a Windows 10 machine to a Windows 10 VM. So that's it for this video on VMware Converter. Hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.